The United States, I'll insist we continue to keep the commitments we made of providing close air support, making sure that their Air Force functions and is operable, res resupplying their forces with food and equipment, and paying all their salaries. But they've got to want to fight. A U.S. intelligence official is telling CBS News that Kabul could come under pressure in a month or two, and if that happens, the entire Afghan government could collapse in as little as 90 days from today. Does the president dispute that assessment, or does he accept it as the likely outcome? Well, we don't rely on anonymous assessments. We rely on the intelligence assessments made by the U.S. government. They have put out public assessments, which certainly we stand by. We are closely watching the deteriorating security conditions in parts of the country, uh, but no particular outcome, in our view, is inevitable. Let me be very clear, because this is a point uh, I want to uh, leave no uncertainty about. Uh, the embassy remains open. Uh, we continue our diplomatic work, our diplomatic mission in Afghanistan. Uh, we will continue uh, to do uh, the priority functions. Is the embassy going to remain open in its current location? The embassy remains open. Uh, Matt, we are always, we are all, the second part of the question, we, we, open out of location, or is it going to the we are always evaluating uh, the situation on the ground, but it's, but it's very important to say that our uh, embassy remains open and our diplomatic mission will endure. Uh, right now, uh, we are, uh, the embassy remains open. Uh, we uh, will continue to have a diplomatic uh, presence on the ground to fulfill uh, these important functions. I want to be very clear uh, about what this is and what this is not. Uh, this is not abandonment. This is not an evacuation. Uh, this is not the wholesale withdrawal. We intend to continue uh, our diplomatic presence on the ground. We intend to continue that enduring partnership. Did the administration fail to plan or fail to understand what U.S. military withdrawal from Afghanistan would uh, entail, what would, would create. We have always been engaged in contingency planning. Uh, this was a contingency that we had foreseen. This was a contingency uh, that we had planned for. Uh, so it is not the case that we're being caught flat-footed. This morning, Afghanistan reeling as around 3,000 U.S. troops set to deploy back into Afghanistan to help an emergency evacuation of some embassy staff and others out of Kabul. As the Taliban's grip around the country tightens, with up to 3,500 troops to be stationed in Kuwait on standby, officials refusing to call the deployment a combat mission or an evacuation. Our job here now with this additional plus up is to help facilitate the safe movement of, of civilian personnel out of Afghanistan. Helicopters and airplanes circled over Kabul, shuttling between the embassy, where sensitive documents were burned, and the airport as the Taliban closed in. Where is Joe Biden in all of this? Well. He's a Camp David. He's a Camp David and will be there until next Wednesday while this great failure of his presidency uh, takes place and unfolds uh, underneath the eyes of the world. Secretary Blinken, as you know, the Taliban has closed in on Kabul. We're evacuating the embassy, burning documents. Biden increased troops deploying to the country twice in three days just to rescue those there. This is not just about the overall idea of leaving Afghanistan. This is about leaving hastily and ineptly Secretary Blinken, how did President Biden get this so wrong? Jake, first, let's put this in context. Uh, and as we've discussed before, we were in Afghanistan for one overriding purpose, uh, to deal with the folks who attacked us on 9-11. That's why we went there 20 years ago. Uh, and over those 20 years, uh, we brought bin Laden to justice. Uh, we vastly diminished the threat posed by al-Qaeda in Afghanistan to the United States, to the point where it's not capable of conducting such an attack again from Afghanistan. We're going to keep in place in the region the capacity to see if any reemergence of a terrorist threat and to be able to deal with it. Uh, and on the terms that we went into Afghanistan in the first place, we've succeeded in achieving our objectives. Just hours later, seeing the writing on the wall and likely saving his life, President Ashraf Ghani escaped the country. By nightfall, the Taliban seized the presidential palace. Al Jazeera broadcast pictures of them inside Afghanistan's equivalent of the Oval Office, while the United States scrambled to evacuate an inglorious end to a 20-year war. What has the Biden administration had to say about all the developments Sunday? 
Well, we haven't heard from the president again. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken was on many Sunday shows today, and he defended the president's policy.